Let's go ahead and take a look at the application that we'll be building in this section. So this will be a simple to-do list application, which will allow you to add items to the pending state as well as the completed state. So let me go ahead and add something. So I'm just gonna say, feed the cat. And you can see that that particular item is added to the pending list. Now I'm gonna say, feed the rabbit. And then we'll say, clean the car. Let's go ahead and say that clean the car is done. So I can check mark this and you can see that it has moved to the completed items. If I uncheck that, it moves back to the pending items. I can even go ahead and change the text. So this is all editable. So I can go and edit this out and I can say, don't feed the cat, but feed the, the dog. And I can also mark things for deletion. So once it's deleted, it's deleted. I can go and say feed the rabbit. Now, once the item is marked for completed, I cannot edit this, unlike the pending items, which I can edit, but the completed items I cannot edit unless I make them again editable by moving them into the pending list. Let's go ahead and add another item. We'll say clean the house. We'll say clean the house is done, and you can also delete it, all right? So this is the application that we'll be building using Swift UI and core data. Let's learn about data management with core data by creating a simple to-do list application. You can already see that I've created a basic Swift UI project. In order to get started with core data, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and add a model. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a new template. And in the template, I'm going to select the data model. And you can see that this is under the section core data, which indicates that these things are related to core data. And the data model is going to allow you to specify different records along with their properties that you want to store in SQLite using core data framework. So let's go ahead and add that. You can call your model anything you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and call this to-do model, but you can call this anything you want. Let's create that. Great. So this is the model designer, the data model designer, as you can see. You can always use the add entity to add a new model. So right now we just want to store a to-do item. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add an entity and an entity will be added, you can see right there. Now, I don't really like to name my entity entity. I mean, this I want to represent it with the real world. So let's go ahead and rename this to to-do item. So this means that this particular entity is going to be representing a single to-do item. In the attribute section, you can see that it's completely blank, there's nothing there. Since this is our first exposure to core data with Swift UI, I'm going to start really slow and just going to add a couple of different properties over here. So let's add an attribute, attribute property, same thing, uh, the title. So this means that this will be the title for the to-do item, like mow the lawn, feed the cat, things like that. The second thing is the type what data type it will be. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select string over here. Great. And if you open up the properties window, you can see since I have selected this attribute called title, I can see all of these different properties related to the title attribute. And one of them is saying optional. This means that the title is optional. Now we don't really want the title to be optional. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that part because title for a to-do item is required. Let's go ahead and add another attribute and I'm gonna call this attribute, it's completed, whether your task or to-do item is completed or not. Now it's completed, we're gonna have only two values if it's completed or not, true or false. So let's go ahead and select Boolean and again, we don't really want this to be an optional. I mean, this is a required thing that you have to provide. So I'm gonna make sure it's not optional. And for the default value, we will put no. 
this means that the task is not completed. So if you create a new to-do item, the default value of its completed will be false or no. And let's go ahead and build it. Okay, it's building, great. Now, one other thing I want to point out is if I select, if I click on the entity, which I'm doing right now, you can see that the properties window has now changed. And one of the things that is really interesting over here is the option for code generation. The code generation simply means right now it's selected to class definition, but you have a couple of different options over here also. So manual or none, which basically means that no class will be generated for you uh, and you will have to do the work of creating a class in Swift to represent the to-do item. Uh, class definition means that the class will be created for you and then, you know, it, so everything will be done for you. I mean, a class will be created and that class will have uh, two properties representing its completed and title. The last option is category or extension. Category is coming from the Objective C background uh, and extension, obviously, we're talking about Swift extension. So category or extension simply means that you will be able to provide properties or additional stuff in the, in the way of adding it to the extension. So since we're just starting out, we're just gonna select class definition and make sure it is class definition. This means that the uh, you know Xcode will write or create a class for you. So the class will be called exactly with the same name, which was to do item, and it will contain different properties like it's completed and title. So all of that work will be done by Xcode or for you, or core data will do the work. You don't have to go and create that particular class. So this is great. Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we are setting up the core data stack correctly. Right now, uh, we have created our to-do item, but uh, we still have to make sure that our core data stack is set up correctly so we can interact with the core data. So that is what we'll be doing in the next lecture.